Murli Notes, 10th November 2022 There is a spiritual law that says God is necessary only when humanity is suffering. And that is during the second half of the time cycle. When the time cycle reaches its end, then human suffering is at maximum. And God becomes physically present to provide the necessary information for humanity to extract itself from all bondages of negative karma and create great good fortune. God is known as the remover of hardship and giver of prosperity. There is an automatic function within the human psyche that turns to God as a last resort when all else fails. It seems to be more active among those who have high ideals and low disappointments, less active among the cynical and materialists who believe that life is just a physical phenomenon. Hindu devotees use the word Hari for Krishna, but the word Hari means remover and applies to incorporeal God who is called the remover of pain. There is the word Haridwar, which means the gateway to the world without pain. They think this refers to the gateway to heaven. What is the gateway to God? Since God incarnates into the body of another, that other body can be called the gateway to God. The knowledge that is spoken through the mouth of the other can also be called the gateway to God. In Hinduism, there is much symbolism associated with access to God via an aperture. Hindus are generally not able to read the symbols and tend therefore to consider the symbols to be the reality. This inability to read symbols has resulted in idolatry. Making the symbol into something physical is characteristic of all religions. Since the symbolism is incomprehensible when assumed to be a physical reality, this has led to blind faith. Blind faith arrested the development of the intellect. Suspension of disbelief destroys the process of logical coherent thought. The destruction of the intellect through blind faith is far worse than the concept of destruction of the intellect through sense perception. In fact, the Vedantic Hindus have focused on suppression of the senses due to this misconception. In the Gita, the very famous verses that describe this are in fact misleading. Verses 62 and 63 of the second chapter are invariably interpreted at face value. This has given rise to the preoccupation with the five vices in a particular order. Attachment, then lust or greed anger, then delusion or ego. Since the purpose of the Gita is to enable a human being to perceive God, it makes more sense to interpret these verses differently. The verses read, 
For a man dwelling on objects of sense, attachment to them is born. From attachment, desire is born. From desire, anger is born. From anger arises delusion. From delusion, loss of awareness. Awareness becomes foggy. From loss of awareness, destruction of intelligence. From destruction of intelligence, the self is destroyed. Vedantic Hindu males took this to refer to how a normal man lives in the context of women, sexuality, money, family, land, self-aggrandizement, desire for power, etc. They used this verse to justify the system of Hatha Yoga and Sannyas. Other religions took their cue of monastic spiritual life from this. However, there is a much deeper interpretation which I think is much closer to what Shi Baba is saying and closer to what is meant by the words of the Gita. These two verses occur at the end of the chapter about the soul. They are generally taken out of context, widely quoted, and used by religious authorities to justify religious bigotry and misogyny. Objects of sense does not actually refer to female bodies, money, land, or children, but to religious symbols. God's role begins in the Copper Age, which corresponds to the Abrahamic concept of the fall from grace. People began to think of God when they began to experience pain, loss, separation, and Deh Abhiman, which is the delusion that you are a body, not a soul, what Baba calls body consciousness. At that time, half their spiritual power was lost and they were no longer able to live in a state of natural soul consciousness. The fallen ones received visions of light, the point of light, and soon began to create symbols of this using cabochon cut diamonds. These are objects of sense. They desired an experience of spiritual energy and power. But they could not get their lost power restored, which made them angry. This emotion caused further loss of energy and spiritual power to the point where they believed themselves to be bodies. Consciousness of the self as a soul became inaccessible. They were deluded into thinking of the self as a male body and called it Purusha, while the female body was named Prakruti. The insatiable desire of men to take power from matter led to addictions, sexual, substance abuse, exploitation to gain money, land, political power, slaves, and as much as they drank, so much did they become weaker and increasingly corrupt. Under the influence of these addictions, humanity became karmically embroiled in each other to the point of self-extinction. At that point, it was necessary for God to come and verbally clarify the distinction between matter and spirit. Om Shanti